Hey y'all. So as we're talking about renewing our mind to what the father says and how he sees us, you know, David did have to do that. So yesterday we talked about David and the strength and power and confidence that he walked in after Goliath. But you know, it wasn't always like that for David. Yeah, king Saul sought to kill David because the anointing to be king had been removed from Saul. And uh, the prophet Samuel had anointed David as the next king. Saul didn't like that. Didn't go over very well. And so he sought to kill him. And then, you know, through all of David is such a real person in that we, you know, there were moments when he was so close to God. And then there are moments when we were like, do you even know Jehovah? And I, I think we can see our lives in that aspect as well. In that, you know, we, our heart, I mean, David was known as a man after God's own heart. Our heart and our deepest longing is to be that man or woman after God's own heart. And yet sometimes we find ourselves way over here. Like, do you even remember Jehovah, do you remember who he is and what he's done? But, um, you know, David always came back. But in the midst of some of his darkest times, you know, his son sought to kill him as well. And, I mean, that's pretty harsh. But in those moments and in, in the hard and the pressing and the what seemed to be desolate times, um, David, and we've talked about this many times before, but it's something that we might need to be reminded of, especially in Psalm 103, where it says, Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me, the deepest parts of me, praise and bless his holy name. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all of his benefits. And so in this, David is telling himself you will bless the lord in this moment you will choose to bless the lord david blessed the lord in the deepest parts bless the lord and then he begins to remind himself, regardless, I love, love this, regardless of what is going on, these are the reasons he's still worthy. It doesn't matter. The external circumstance does not change the truth that he is worthy. You will bless the Lord Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not one of all of his benefits. And then David begins to list those benefits promised by God to his people. Who forgives everyone of all of your iniquities. Who heals each one of all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and corruption. Who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies your mouth, your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good. So that your youth renewed is like the eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. The Lord executes righteousness and justice not for me only, but for all who are oppressed. He made his ways of righteousness and justice known to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy and loving kindness. He will not always chide or be contending, neither will he keep his anger forever Um or hold a grudge. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Oh man, this this next verse goes into the next one we'll get to in our 31 days, but he says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy and loving kindness towards those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father loves and pities his children, so the Lord loves and pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He earnestly remembers and imprints on his heart that we are dust. 
As for man, his days are as grass, and as the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone, and it shall be known no more. But the mercy and love and kindness of the Lord are from everlasting to everlasting upon those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. His righteousness is to children's children. To such as keep his covenant, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying and those who earnestly remember his commandments and do them, imprinting them on their hearts. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to his voice. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, all you his hosts, you his ministers who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Yes, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And so do you hear how David encouraged himself in the Lord, reminding himself of the truths of who God is and what he had done, rather than staying in that place of being lost, drained, inadequate, destitute, and alone. I encourage you in that today. Remember, remember, remember. We'll pick up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.